This week we're attempting to fix Nintendo Switch number two, purchased for £65 faulty off of eBay. The listing states that the device doesn't power on. Shock. Just quickly before we head over to the desk to inspect it, big shout out to my mate Vince, because this dad hat is all me. I will leave a link in the description for Vince's merch. Right, let's see if we can revive a dead Nintendo Switch. Let's go! Welcome yourselves back to another video. I don't think I've managed to fix two Nintendo Switches on the trot. So let's do this, let's try and fix this one. Come on, we got this. Let's take off the bubble wrap and view the condition of this Switch. What are the initial thoughts? Wow, okay. What? This is pristine. Too good to be true, as they say. The last pristine Nintendo Switch that I had ended up being a CPU failure. This one is immaculate, man. All the screws, no scratch marks again down the rail side. The kickstand is intact and works fine. This is gorgeous. Serial number is XAJ. Does it come with a game? No. We have top screw intact. We have the bottom screws intact. Wow, this is immaculate. 65 pound for this looks like so far a bargain, but we will see. The listing states that the console does not seem to charge or power on. The USB port looks like it may have some slight damage inside. I can definitely see that from the pins. I don't know if you can just see down there. We'll take a better look under the microscope in a second, but there seems to be some pins misaligned down here. You can see that those gold sparkly bits? They're clearly poking out. Let's get it apart and take a look. I've taken three screws out, but before we go any further, I will test it on the amp meter that we have. So this is a USB-C amp meter, which will tell us the current draw of the switch. What happens? Flashing again. We had this last week, man. That could be M92 damage, rather than the actual port itself. But the port does have pins that are out of place. Let me check again. The flashing. Maybe something has shorted it. Let me try the other side. See if we get the same result. No, we get something different this side. 0.0, .0 amps, look at that. Same sort of issue that we had last week. I'll leave a card in the corner so you can have a peek at last week's video because that, uh, that was a very interesting fix. But this coming back at 0.00 on this side, this tells me there's something wrong other than just the charging port being a bit faulty. Could today be an M92 replacement plus charging port? Let's have a look. Just a quick first layer check as well. It doesn't look like there's any water damage that can be seen on this switch. It looks in immaculate condition. What I will say is, as you can see from that, this screw is completely rounded off. And it was like this before I even touched it. And that is a screw that goes here. This one's fine, this one wasn't. That's strange. Now that we've got the board out, I'm just gonna wipe away the thermal paste so we can work nice and clean. Just for people that are interested, this is a HAC CPU 20 board. You guys might be a bit dizzy, but I'm freehand holding a microscope. As you can see, to the right is where that pin is. Look at that. It's definitely gonna require a port swap. I'll stop making you dizzy now. Meter is going into continuity mode, which is where you have the two probes, and when we clip them together, that is a complete circuit. Let's check the fuse first of all. This is just above the charging port. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Just going to check this filter, which is next to the fuse, just up a little bit from it. That's fine. That's also fine. Check this cap here. That's fine. Just gonna quickly check around the BQ chip. Nothing looks out of the ordinary around here, but it's worth checking. Fine. Fine. Check these ones down here. Fine. Fine. So nothing wrong with BQ. Let's move up to M92. Let's check the dreaded CPU capacitor. If this is short to ground on this side, so if we hear a beep on this side of this cap, it could be game over. No short. Good. Fantastic, that's what we love to hear. Now let's check these capacitors. I've, uh, I've swiftly learned that this, beeping on this side, is actually okay. That cap's fine. That cap's fine. Move up to the three caps that we have up here. These sides should not be short to ground. And they're not, they're all good. Top row should be. Nice, this one shouldn't be. Nice, that's all good. Finally, we'll check the ones on the right. That's fine, that's normal. I think we need to swap M92 T36 anyway, because when we put the amp meter in to charge the device, it was stuck on 0.00 amps when the charger was recognized. So I still think that needs to come out. I still think that's a fault. I'm just gonna check the back of the board where P13 is. This is this long chip here. I'm gonna check the big cap. That's fine. So this, this, this side should beep, this side shouldn't and it seems to be no issues there. I'll just have a look at these filters and make sure that they're all good. Should have continuity opposite, but not crossing diagonally.
Oh, this filter might be bad then. Because this is diagonal, as you can see. Let's just test here. That's also, okay, so this one, the one right in the center is a bad filter. And the last one's okay. So we have a few things we need to do with this Nintendo Switch. We need to take off and replace the charging port. We need to replace the M92 chip and we need to replace this middle filter, which is here on the back of the board. So let's go ahead and make those changes now. But I'd actually show you guys this before I crack on. In an attempt to stay more organized, I've purchased a box where I can put all my chips. Look at this. So down here, for example, we've got Nintendo Switch USB charging port, Xbox One uh, HDMI port, HDMI port. So we'll be taking this one. And there we go. We have a Nintendo Switch USB-C charging port. How cool is that? And then up here, we've got some really, really small stuff. So we've got M92, T36, P13 for Nintendo Switch. Excuse the handwriting, but you guys you guys get the gist. It's uh, it's really, really cool. I'm really happy with this. If you are interested in something like this, I'll leave a Amazon link down below in the description. First off, we're just gonna add some flux and low melt solder to help with getting this port off. That should be enough. Now we're gonna use our heat gun, we're gonna set the temperature to 460 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of four out of eight. Now I like to have a quick look at the port to see what kind of damage it was properly now. So, can we have a look? Look at that. Jeez, that pin is, <laughs> for some reason, is it me? But there seems to be a pin which, so this pin here goes underneath, down the back of all of these other pins, which is probably what's caused the short. I say probably, it's definitely caused the short. Gone to M92 and completely fried M92. Meanwhile, we do have a pin at the back there that I've just zoomed in on, <laughs> right down here. And uh, I don't know what that's, that one's doing. Like it's gone on a holiday or something. So this port definitely needed replacing. Pad wise, we're looking good. We didn't burn too much of the port either, which is always a result. It's just nice to have a clean removal. There's no ripped, torn pads that we can see there. If I take the motherboard, we can in fact see that this is also pretty clean. What I need to do now is take a soldering iron and solder wick and clean out all of these holes and just get rid of any solder that you can see that's left over around these pads. Make it as clean as possible so that when we're putting our new port in, it makes it easy. Easier is what I'm gonna say because I still really struggle with port replacements, really bad. I'm just adding a bit of flux to see if we can remove it all easy. As you can see, we're starting to struggle in a little bit with trying to remove the solder. So Clever Joey thought it would be a good idea to move over to the solder sucker. I've never had an issue with a solder sucker until today. At this point, I also make a really bad mistake. I rectify it at the end, but if you don't make mistakes, how do you learn? That's what I tell myself anyway. For that thing that we're never ever going to talk about again, I do want to do some testing. I know how to make my life harder, I'll tell you that. I was using my solder sucker and I accidentally sucked up a few components. Now here's the funny thing. The middle filter, which is the one that I said, is broken and that we need to replace. That's the one I sucked up with the solder sucker. All the others have been splattered around the place. So I think we're okay. I'm just going to test them to make sure that I didn't accidentally suck up a good filter. 
I think the last job that I'm going to do is put this filter on because it will be a nice little finishing touch. So now I'm going to worry about putting the port on, which is probably the hardest bit for me. We're going to tin up the pads with low melt solder, just these ones here that we can see. And then we're going to drop the port on and see how that goes. Before I have the best of looks, I'm just giving it a quick clean with a brush, toothbrush that is. Okay, fuse is still there, which is a result. Okay, that probably, that looks like the best one I've done so far, but I thought that last time, and then when you poke the prongs, or you poke, you poke the connection, sometimes it can, uh, it can wobble. So let's just do a poke test. I mean, it looks okay on the face of it. Fine, I'll give it a poke. Nudge test, they call it. That's fine, that's fine. Yes, come on. All of them seem to be fine, which is I'm um, really, really happy about. I'll be happier when I've put the charger in and it charges on both sides, but I think that's good. It's very flush with the board, which is another good sign. I'm now just gonna put some solder in these legs to keep the port secure. I have faith enough to not test it, but worst case scenario, we'll just drop it out again with a heat gun if it's not working. I have faith today, I have faith. We're now going to take M92 T36 off and what I'm going to do is use a hot air gun about 460 degrees Celsius with a fan speed of 3 out of 8 because there's a lot of sensitive components around it. Then I'm going to leave the solder that's on there and just pop the new chip on and we'll see how we get on. Let's have a little bit of chip inspection, shall we? All right, so this is, let's do these sides first. These are my favorite sides. There's a lot of flux left over, but it seems to be a good connection on both of those, good. Uh, this side, fine. Again, a little bit of flux, but nothing we can't clean up. And this side, nice, smooth connections, man. Okay, so that's a brand new T36 chip. The only thing that I've got left to do is replace this filter, and then we're gonna give it a test. I've got a donor board, actually, with these filters on, so I'll grab that right now. Here we have our donor board. I first just need to check that the filter that I'm taking is going to be all right. This one's going to be fine. Just to recap on what we've done before we give this a test to see if it works. We replaced the charging port. I think we've done an okay job with that. We then replaced the M92 chip, which again, I think we've done okay. Could have done a lot better, but I think it should be all right. And then if we turn over to the back of the board, we have also replaced this filter. I massively messed this bit up. So I'm really hoping that it's gonna be okay. I've knocked a load of components everywhere. Let's put it back together enough to test and wish me luck. Let's go. This would be amazing if it works. Now, I may have made a ridiculously rookie mistake here and I've put most of the things back, except for the heat sink. I've still got that to put back, but I have screwed down only two screws. So we're gonna check now and see if this is working. I have the original battery plugged in. This is not called an amp meter, as I've just found out from Phil the coder. This is actually called an am meter without the P. Moment of truth, I'm very nervous because we've changed a lot of components on this board. Is it gonna work? Three, two, one. We get a light, that's good, because it shows that the port's okay, I think. 0 0.08, 0 0.10, do I get a backlight? I think I've got a backlight. 0 0.12 amps, okay, I'm gonna take this out and we're gonna flip it and see what it's like on the other side. 
I don't know if because it's 0 0.12, I don't know if the battery is that dead that it's not going to show anything on the screen. Yes! Oh, shut up because it has. Look at that. We've got a battery charging symbol. Let's go, man. So this thing's working. I forgot to mention earlier, it also has a screen protector as well. This thing is in mint condition and I've just managed to fix it. I can't believe it. I've only managed to fix this because of your support, your help, and everyone I watch on YouTube. So thank you guys. I wouldn't be able to do this bad. Like, I've fixed the Nintendo Switch. This isn't going in the bin. This is gonna to go to somebody else's home and they're gonna use it. I can't get over that. And I am so grateful to all of you watching for that, so thank you. And I'm happy that I'm able to share this experience. Now, this is only half the fix. I need to make sure that the Joy-Con rails work, the Wi-Fi works, the games work, the touchscreen works, the sound and volume work. So I'm gonna leave this to charge for about five, 10 minutes, wait for it to come on. Then we're gonna come back to it and test a few things. So don't go just yet. Come on, let's go. Just a quick note, after I reassembled everything, it didn't actually work on the docking station. And there's a reason for that, as you can see on your screen. These two capacitors here, around the wrong way. <laughs> so let me fix them and test on the dock quick. I've just put them around the right way, so it should be fixed now. Um, I'll test it on the dock and just confirm in a sec. Okay, so the switch did just boot and there it is. I'm gonna first, yeah, there's a touch screen, wicked, works fine. This person had loads of games, man, what? Let's test these real quick. There's one, click, click, lovely. Two, click, click, lovely. Paired, no issues, moving them. And now what I'm gonna do is take them off, and there we go, would you look at that, working fine. Apologies for the plane in the background. Let's test the game quick and make sure that the reader works. This is Pokemon Sword, which is going in. Bosh, would you look at that. We're also charging at 0.85 amps as well, which means it's fast charging. It searches for the network and finds it. Obviously, I'm not gonna show you guys my screen. That is another Nintendo Switch saved from going straight into the bin. Make sure you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Let's go. Two and two.